Oh. A wild classroom of eco geeks exploring biodiversity. The world is a beautiful mystery. Life, learning, and discovery. E e e e e e e eco geeks. Rob Nelson here with Eco Geeks, and we are starting something new, and we wanted to let you guys know about it. We are doing email questions. Every once in a while, we're going to take a question that you write into us, and we're going to talk about it on the podcast. So, if you have a question, email us at ecogeeks at thewallclassroom.com. Just so happens, we already have a few that random emails that people have written in, and we've pulled this one because we're here in Hawaii, and it's about Hawaii. This one is from 10-year-old George Potter from Montana. He writes, Dear Eco Geeks, I just visited the islands of Hawaii with my family, and I learned that over 90% of its plants and animals were found nowhere else in the world. I also learned that the islands are young, forming new land even as we speak. Where do the plants and animals come from if they're not found anywhere else? George, that's a very good question, and it's in two parts, really. First of all, how did those animals get there? And secondly, what happened to those animals once they got there if they're not found anywhere else in the world? Hawaii is a very unique place. Well, there were no cockroaches, there were no mosquitoes, no ticks, lice, mice, ants, no four-legged walking creatures of any kind, no mammals except for a bat and a monk seal, no reptiles, amphibians, a lot of those were found nowhere else, but some of them did get here. So we decided, some of our crew, to go out and figure out how these animals got here and explain it to them. This is one way new recruits could look out to the island. Riding the winds! Yeah! Certain winds, like the jet stream, can bring seeds and spores to the islands. For instance, this is how fern spores got here. Here's another example of how some species of animals may have very well gotten here from Hawaii. It's a term called rafting. Plants, maybe some insects or animals might have actually utilized a large chunk of driftwood or a large seed like this and used it as a raft and it actually floated through Oceania and maybe even landed here in Hawaii. We did it, buddy! Another way things could have gotten here is through the birds in their stomachs or on their wings. Stay tuned, because that's only part of the story. Next week, we're going to look at the Oahu tree snails and find out why they're not found anywhere else in the world. Oh. A wild classroom of eco geeks exploring biodiversity. The world is a beautiful mystery. Life, learning, and discovery. E -e 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 eco geeks. Rob Nelson here with Eco Geeks, and we are starting something new, and we wanted to let you guys know about it. We are doing email questions. Every once in a while, we're going to take a question that you write into us, and we're going to talk about it on the podcast. So, if you have a question, email us at ecogeeks at thewallclassroom.com. Just so happens, we already have a few that random emails that people have written in. And we've pulled this one because we're here in Hawaii, and it's about Hawaii. This one is from 10-year-old George Potter from Montana. He writes, Dear Eco Geeks, I just visited the islands of Hawaii with my family and I learned that over 90% of its plants and animals were found nowhere else in the world. I also learned that the islands are young, forming new land even as we speak. Where do the plants and animals come from if they're not found anywhere else? George, that's a very good question, and it's in two parts, really. First of all, how did those animals get there? And secondly, what happened to those animals once they got there if they're not found anywhere else in the world? Hawaii is a very unique place. Well, there were no cockroaches, there were no mosquitoes, no ticks, lice, mice, ants, no four-legged walking creatures of any kind, no mammals except for a bat and a monk seal, no reptiles, amphibians, a lot of those were found nowhere else, but some of them did get here, so we decided, some of our crew, to go out and figure out how these animals got here and explain it to them. This is one way new recruits could look out to the island, riding the winds, yeah! 
Certain winds, like the jet stream, can bring seeds and spores to the islands. For instance, this is how fern spores got here. Here's another example of how some species of animals may have very well gotten here from Hawaii. It's a term called rafting. Plants, maybe some insects or animals might have actually utilized a large chunk of driftwood or a large seed like this and used it as a raft and it actually floated through Oceania and maybe even landed here in Hawaii. We did it, buddy! Another way things could have gotten here is through the birds in their stomachs or on their wings. Stay tuned because that's only part of the story. Next week we're going to look at the Oahu tree snails and find out why they're not found anywhere else in the world. Classroom of Eco Geeks Exploring Biodiversity The world is a beautiful mystery Life, learning, and discovery e -e 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 Eco Geeks Let me tell you a story. It's about the Oahu tree snails. So on the islands of Hawaii, actually just on the island of Oahu, there lives the native Akitanella tree snails. Now these are an entire family of snails that aren't found anywhere else in the world. And the snails, they're pretty diverse too. Scientists have found at least 40 different species, and each one of those has its own brilliant pattern. So, by and large, most species are isolated on one mountain ridge. Now see, the geography determines climatic patterns, and climate determines species ranges. And well, if you're a snail and you can't get to the next ridge, then your population is split. You're isolated, and then this isolation and genetic drift gives rise to a new species. Now these snails, however, didn't evolve like other snails. Remember, Hawaii had no... They evolved with no competitors, and they evolved with no predators. And as a result, they became pretty weak. Heck, you've got a whole family of snails that gives birth to one or a few young, but only after they've lived six or seven years. Now that's pretty unique. Most snails lay thousands of eggs. That means the Oahu tree snail population will grow a lot slower than a normal snail. And that would have been all fine and dandy until they released a predator. That would be the wolf snail. It was a predatory snail introduced from Florida in an effort to control the giant African snails. Beastly snails. Now this wouldn't have been a problem if the snail only followed the slime trail of the African snail. Unfortunately for the Oahu tree snails, found an appetite for them too. century, the wolf snails, rats, in combination with habitat loss from human encroachment, have exterminated all but only six or seven of these native Oahu tree snails. From 41 species to only six or seven. That's ridiculous. Only a couple of these species are still found in isolated patches of the forest. The remaining species live in a rearing facility in a small refrigerator on the campus of the University of Hawaii. They're in little containers and they're misted three times a day to replicate the rain and they have a little light on the inner door. That's there to simulate the sun. It's all done by scientists in an effort to breed these guys, in an effort to someday reintroduce them back into the wild. For more information, go to thewildclassroom.com. This episode is brought to you after our short trip to England. We're sorry for the delay, but we were attending the Wildlife Film Festival in Bristol. And yes, those are giant pandas hugging Sir David Attenborough.
Tristan Bear, and you are watching Eco Geeks.